Okay, let me start over really quick. Um, inshallah, um, we are going to be going over three very important surahs today, inshallah. Surah Mu'minun, Surah Nur, and um, Surah Furqan. And I also want to thank those of you who made little videos and sent those in. Um, Maria and Maliha, they looked really amazing. I just saw your videos. And those are going to be featured on this little video um, for the MCC. So y'all are so cool, mashallah. Okay. Now, um, inshallah, to try to get the time, um, you know, everything in. The first surah that we're going through is Surah Al-Mu'minun, which is um, the 23rd surah. It's a Makkan surah. And what is really memorable about this surah is that it starts with the description of the believers. So like the first 11 verses, super duper describe believers. Now, imagine if a teacher told you, um, it was the day before a test and the teacher told you, hey kids, um, I'm about to tell you, um, you know, what's gonna be on the test tomorrow. I think most people would probably pay attention, right? They'd be like, wait a second, she's gonna tell us what's on the test tomorrow. So what they would do is anybody that has any sort of sense would say, oh my God, let me just like listen up, you know? And that's the same thing. Allah is, um, whenever he describes the believers, I'm really sorry, I think it's like lawn mowing going on outside. So it's just kind of like hmm, loud. Okay, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us descriptions of the believers, we should definitely like tune in, okay? So, um, here we have several strong descriptions and whenever he gives an entire passage like this, that means we really need to pay attention. So here it says, um, in the name of Allah, the most uh, compassion of the merciful, so it will be that the believers will succeed. What kind of success are we talking about? We are not talking about uh, just success of this life. We're talking about ultimate success. Ultimate success is when Allah is happy with us and we end up in eternal happiness. We are faithful in this world uh, we're dear to Allah, and then we're also um, in the akhirat, like put in a really good place. So that's what you call successful. Now, then he describes those who are successful. He says, who are humble in their prayers, who avoid useless chatter. So to be humble in your prayers, that means uh, you really know who you're praying on front of, right? You're not just like zipping through it. Like, you know, some people describe like a chicken or like a, you know, you're not like, you don't have like the TV on the side and you're like praying and watching your show. No, 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 no. Okay. You actually need to be humble on front of Allah. Like sometimes um, my kids, if they like show up, like not wearing good clothes during their prayer, I get kind of upset because like, you have to know who you're praying on front of, right? So uh, those who are humble in their prayer, who avoid useless chatter. What does it mean to avoid useless chatter? That means don't say things that are not beneficial. Remember, speak good or be silent. It says those who engage in charity, who guard their purity, except with their spouses and those under their control whom they've married, for, their, for there's no blame on them. Whoever goes beyond these limits are indeed out of bounds. True believers are those who faithfully discharge their trusts and agreements and they guard their prayers strictly. So remember we talked about the word amana, which is a trust? Um, so a true believer is someone who you can trust and you know that feeling like um, you know what that feeling is like if you have a friend who you would never tell them a secret never because you know what's going to happen when you tell them a secret when you tell them a secret you won't even turn around and some other friend is like calling you and like they're like oh my god I just heard this okay that's not a person who has trustworthiness the person who has trustworthiness is that person who you would want to share your secrets with them, okay? And also, they guard their prayers strictly. What does it mean to guard? Why would you guard something? People don't just, I mean, if something like doesn't matter to you, you're just going to throw it out in the middle of the path, right? But if something matters to you, you guard it, right? So if you have like a precious jewel or like your grandma or somebody gave you some jewelry, what do you do with it? Do you just like leave it randomly, like, you know, in the middle of the dining table? No, right? You put it like in a safe, in a jewelry box, you guard it. Why are you guarding it? Because you only guard things that are really valuable and important to you, right? And so what do we have to do with our prayers? It doesn't just say to pray our prayers. It says to guard our prayers, right? So what are we guarding it from? So when you guard um, like jewelry, right? What do you do? You don't want like a thief to take it, right? You don't want... Um, there's shaitan, there's so many people out there um, that could harm and they might take it, they might throw it away, or if you get your report card or something important, you don't want um, somebody to just, you know, do something wrong with it. It's something important, you guard it. So, you know, you, you don't want to let an um, untrustworthy person 
come near it. So the reason you're guarding your prayers is because there are so many things that could rob you of your prayers, right? So for example, shaitan. Shaitan is going to come and rob you in like infinite ways through uh, the shows that you want to watch, through the games that you want to play, through the things you want to do. Abu, can you not bounce the ball right now? Right there, you can bounce it elsewhere. Or you can listen, but that makes noise. So um, what, it, what it says is those who guard their prayers strictly for, for that reason. It says they will be what? Inheritors who will inherit an exclusive garden in paradise and there they shall remain. What does it mean by inheritors? You know, when we talk about inheritance, it's like somebody owned something and then it goes on to the next person. So you inherit, right? So if you do all these things, you're going to inherit paradise. Paradise is going to be yours. Okay. So paradise belongs to Allah, but it's going to become yours. Um, if you are what? If you are successful and you do all these things that are stated in this passage. Okay. So this surah goes on to talk about the cycle of human beings the fruits of the earth, the story of Noah. Um, it still continues. It tells us as believers to be united. On verse 52, it says, all you who believe truly this community of yours is one community and I'm your Lord, so be mindful of me. So we're, you know, the Ummah is, is one community. It's one community. And one thing, I was listening actually to several lectures today about the same Jews. I listened to Yasser Qadi and Noman Ali Khan. You know why? because my kids got me AirPods for Mother's Day. So um, before today, I was like so like behind. I didn't know how to fit it in my ears. But once I figured it out, I was like, yay. So I was like listening to <laughs> lectures and cooking and cleaning and all this. So anyways, okay. So uh, somebody just joined. So yeah. So it's interesting because one thing that um, the scholars were mentioning is that our religion, when it talks about all the prophets that came, talks about them in the same way because they all came with the same beliefs. The same beliefs, that's a Kahoot question. And it's gonna be another verse that we go through. But the prophets came with the same message, pretty much. There's very little things that change. The things that changed are minor details, right? And we've talked about this before, that you know they say you know to worship Allah, to give charity, to practice fasting. Like their other prophets came, Maybe they didn't say Ramadan, but maybe they fasted differently. Maybe they didn't give the charity 2.5%, but they gave a different charity, right? Maybe they said, you know, there, there's different things. Like um, Bani Israel people, they were told Saturday is their holy day. Ours is Friday. Even though those are like small little things in general, though, in general, they all said to worship one God, and they all said this. So basically, be united. Uh, it says this community of yours is one community. Another important um, question, which is going to be on the Kahoot. I need to close the door because it's too long. Okay, today is live. So, um, a very important verse is in 62, where it says, We do not place a burden upon any soul that's greater than it can bear. So it's not talking about the kind of weights that you have at the gym or what you carry. A burden on your soul is like, have you ever like gotten really bad news and you felt like your soul was like heavy or burden? You know, um, we each have a soul. And I think Noman Ali Khan today, he was like saying it so beautifully when he said that, um, you know, uh, the soul, it's like something not from this earth. So it's like different from, anything in this earth, I, I don't, I can't say it as nice as he did, but he was saying how, you know, the soul was like created in a spiritual um, way. And so it's like a, something different from our bodies. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to go back and remember what he said or listen to it again, but the soul, you know, um, you feel burdened when you get a sad news. Like if you get your report card, you thought you were going to get like an A and what if you see a C and you just feel like, oh, like, oh my God. Or like, you know, or like something happens, you know, rain, rain comes and like your, your field trip gets canceled and you're like, oh, right. So that's your soul. That's your heart. And so Allah tells us that he does not place a burden on any soul beyond uh, what it can bear. So every single person is personally connected to Allah. What does that mean? Allah knows every single thing that every single person is going through at all times, even when they don't know what they're going through. Even when we're sleeping, Allah knows what we're going through. So when he gives a load 
to us, something um, that is kind of heavy on our soul, he always knows how much we can handle. So maybe a different person is able to handle something different from me. And I'm able to handle something different from somebody else. But we should know that anytime we're going through like a sad time or like um, anytime we're feeling sad or we feel like something terrible happened, we should know that Allah did not give too much to us because he knows what he gave us. He gave us whatever burden he gave us, we can bear it. And that's the evidence right there in uh, that verse. It says, we don't put more than you can handle, okay? Next. On, um, here's a question from Kahoot, verses 102 and 103. It says, it says, then those whose scales are heavy with good will be successful, and whose scales are scarce will be will have lost their own souls. One second, yes. We started at three. I can't see on my. Uh, I think it says three twelve. So we'll play the kahoot towards the end, okay? So yeah, those whose scales are heavy with good will be successful, uh, while those whose scales are scarce of good will have lost their own souls and be re and be relegated to hellfire once again. This is a kahoot question, I believe. That um, what scales are we talking about? We have mentioned before that there's angels writing our deeds. So there's a mizan on the day of judgment. We yesterday touched upon how it's going to be that we have to walk across a bridge that goes over the hellfire. Well, how are we going to, you know, how is that going to happen? How are we, how is our bridge going to be determined? It's going to be our scale of good deeds and bad deeds. So there is a scale and it's going to have our good deeds and bad deeds. Everybody's is going to be different. Just like you are an individual, your deeds are going to be like your individual. And if your good deeds are more than your bad deeds, if they're heavy, then Allah says it's successful. And you know, if it's not, if it's lighter, then you've lost yourself and gone to hellfire. So that's another Kahoot question. Verse 113, when we go to the day of judgment, you know what we're going to think? People are going to say, oh my God, we only stayed in the dunya for a day or part of a day. So imagine even somebody who lived for a hundred years, they're going to feel like, this whole life in the dunya was just a day or part of a day. They're not going to feel like it was forever or for a thousand years or for 14 centuries or whatever. Those are Kahoot. So it's going to feel like that. Like, have you ever been on like a really long vacation? You went to a different country for like a month or two or three. And um, you come back and, you know, after about a month, you're like, oh, did I, did I go to Pakistan? Did I go to Egypt? Did I go to Jordan? And, you know, it's going to feel like it was, it went by so quickly, like that just feels like yesterday or that just feels like it was like a week, but it was really two months, you know? And so when we get to the Akhirat, we're going to feel like this whole dunya was only for part of a day. That's how we're going to feel. So why are we learning that? Because it's not worth it to ruin um, our entire destiny in the Akhirat just for something that's going to feel like so short later, okay? And then... Um, Allah will say, you stayed only for a little while. He'll exclaim, if only you would have known, did you think we created you just for fun and you wouldn't return to us? So Allah is going to tell us that, yeah, you only stayed for a little while. And did you think that, you know, you were just created for fun and you wouldn't be returned to us? Okay, next surah is very important for us. It is surah nur, which means light. Okay, it's surah number 24. And I'll tell you about this surah, a Kahoot question. This surah has a lot of rules and guidelines about modesty, about behavior, about gender relationships, okay? So that is a good question, okay? So in Surah Nur, there are some very key highlighted verses that, um, that talk about how we should behave, how we should cover, how we should dress with each other, uh, you know, uh, manners. There's, that is one of the major themes. So I'm not going to um, focus on some of the things that talk about like slandering, respectable women and things like that because of time we don't have time to go through every single detail but if you um yeah and you know there, there's all kinds of uh behavioral guidelines like don't hold a grudge against family oh this is important actually it's a good question so um in verse 21 allah says do not let those who have been endowed with great wealth and status among you swear that they're not going to help their poor relatives or the needy or migrate those who migrated in the cause of allah simply because they might have behaved poorly. Forgive them and overlook their faults. Don't you want Allah to forgive you too? Okay. So 
in a family when everyone's an adult and i know everyone here is you know planning to be a millionaire right no well in a family when you're all grown up sometimes in one family you will have maybe one or two people that are given a lot of wealth given a lot of status and there might be um some people in the family that are even very poor and I know my father came from a family where uh, my dad had 14 children, 12 of them lived on long lives. In that family, I mean, you have all kinds. Like I have, you know, uh, my aunt is a Supreme Court judge. The other aunt owns hospitals. She's a, you know, a surgeon. But then they also have like a village. Like I have a couple of that live in the village that are just like not educated, not this. So then the people who have more wealth, you know, and status, they have a duty uh, not to, um, you know, like the, the, basically like, you know, sometimes people annoy us, right? So think about this. When you have wealth and status, you might get annoyed with the manners and the and the happenings of the some of the poor people. They might behave differently. They might annoy you. They might even make you mad. And you might have, normally you would have the right just to like say, you know what, you know, tit for tat. I just, you know, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to take this. I'm busy. I got to go. Well, what Allah is telling us, if you have a lot of wealth and status and you have very poor relatives, don't promise that you're cutting relations. Just be good with them. Give them, okay? Give them and forgive them. Forgive them and overlook their faults. It's like a duty, okay? It's like a duty. And of course, Allah will, of course, it takes patience, but of course, Allah will also reward. And it is Allah who gave us everything anyway, okay? It also says uh, some of the most important points I want to bring up that in verses 27, Allah tells us, all of you who believe, do not go into anyone's house unless you've asked permission and greeted those who live with them. So back in the day before Islam, because Islam brought dignity and manners and all, and back in the day, people would just like walk into each other's houses. You see it in the village. Like when I have visited villages in third world countries, like you always have to have on your hijab because there's no such thing as like knocking or no thing like people just walk in and out and there's like no timings like you have to sleep with your hijab on because people are just like going in and out and there's no rules but this whole idea of seeking permission nowadays with a phone people might text you and say is it okay if i swing by or is it okay this that's also like within the jurisdiction of what it's saying but the point is you know don't go you know unless you've asked permission and there's going to be other verses we talk about, but this is like a manner. It's like a civilization, right? It's like making people more civilized. It says it's not wrong for you to enter buildings without your permission if they're not used for habitation and which serve a public purpose. So like if you're going to like the mall, you're going somewhere, that sort of a building, it's a public building, right? You don't have to like knock and take permission. I mean, of course, there's hours of operation, but I mean like if it's a public, public place, you're going to the airport. I mean, it's saying not those kind of buildings, but if there's a household or someone um, lives there, you need to be respectful of them, okay? And this relates with not just manners and socio-emotional skills, but also the fact that, you know, people's feelings matter in Islam, okay? Um, very importantly, and, and I don't want to run out of time, but um, in verse 30, it talks about, very importantly, tell the believing men that they should lower their gaze and not stare lustfully at women. They should guard their purity and the purest course of action for them to follow. Okay, so first it's telling men to lower their gaze, right? M believing men should not just be looking to and fro. They need to be responsible going about their business. They're either going to work or school or going to the masjid or getting groceries for their family. They're doing something good right? They're playing with their children. They're giving company to their wives, but they're certainly not like, if you're responsible, you should not be just like looking around. And if there's like a, you know, an ill-dressed woman that you're just staring at them with lust. No, first that's haram. And notice that it's first telling the men, it's first telling the men to lower their gaze, but it also tells the women, it says, likewise, tell the believing women, they should lower their gaze and not stare lustfully at men, that they should guard the purity of their body and that they shouldn't show their hidden charms other than what must ordinarily show. So also women have to lower their gaze. And you know what, women, even you have to lower your gaze to other women too, to a certain degree, not the same. But you know, if somebody, you know, when I was in public school, uh, I, I hope they don't cut me off on the Zoom. Um, when I was in public school, they had these locker rooms and after gym, people would just shower. And they didn't have like shower curtains. Like it was like animals. Like I couldn't even go in there, it was so disgusting. 
And just because they do that here, it doesn't mean it's right, okay? So like people would go in the locker rooms and they would just change their clothes and underwear on front of everybody and that's the so haram. And as even as a woman, you can't look at other women who are not dressed properly. Of course, as a man, you can't. But even as a woman, there's a certain degree that you can't look. And that's a very detail that I cannot uh, have the time to tell you now. But it, you know, it tells you to uh, cover your charms. Like, don't like show extra beauty, but it also tells you in uh, a very important verse, um, 31, they should also draw their headscarves over their chest. Don't let their curves be seen except by, and then it gives you 14 mahram, which I'm going to um, skip detailing all of them, but that's where Allah says to not just cover your head, but to also hear um, it needs to be covered, okay? Cover your chest. Don't let your curves be shown, okay? Uh, and subhanAllah, like sometimes, like, you know, it really annoys me if you are scrolling and you're seeing some video, maybe it's attached to like, or, you know, you're, you're like, you know, somehow you're scrolling. People just put, people will like even do very normal things wearing like practically nothing. And you're like, you know, like people will post something tiktok or grocery store or whatever and they're wearing like nothing and you're just like i can't even watch this because they're so you know like it's like you can't even laugh at a funny video because they're dressed so badly and that's the problem you know nowadays people are just like dressing like you know like they're not dressing they're not dressing they're like you know behaving like animals to where even you know women are shy the other last verse i want to tell you about this surah is a beautiful verse and it's a kahoot question as well it says in verse uh, 34, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Kahoot question. What is Allah? The light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like a nook. Within that nook is a lamp, and the lamp is encased in glass. The glass resembles a star, glittering like a pearl, whose flame lit from a blessed tree, an olive tree, neither from the east or the west. I love that point, which if I had time, I would tell you that, you know, we get stuck on what's better like the eastern the western allah he's not from the east or the west he's everything it says whose oil is glistening and glowing even before it's been lit light upon light light upon light beautiful analogy if you have a chance to go back and read that ayah again and really get the description i mean allah is light they could have just stopped and said allah is light no it goes on about how there's layers of light and types of light and like it's such a beautiful verse um, that it's really important. There is one more verse that's a Kahoot question, which is in 35. It says, His light shines forth in houses of worship that he's allowed to be built and sanctified, in which his name is remembered and glorification is done, both in the mornings and the evenings by men who let neither their business nor their trade divert them from the remembrance of Allah, nor from establishing prayer or giving charity. Now, most translations call this houses. Now in this one, I know I mentioned the word houses of worship, but there are many translations that say those houses um, in which the people remember Allah morning and evening, they're like honored, okay? Because when you remember Allah as your priority, there's a spiritual blessing in that place, okay? And notice it says, it, sa it doesn't say those who are not busy, so they keep worshiping. It says they don't allow the busyness of the world to divert. So it is busy. It's always going to be busy. But if you choose to remember Allah, even though you're super busy, then it says, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Allah shines in those houses. Okay, so it's, it's basically um, really um, praising. I don't want to use the word praising, but it's really saying that these houses have a really high place. That people, it says, it says in whose name is remembered his glorification is done both in the mornings and evenings like the upkar and the prayers right it says by men who let me so it's the type of people who don't let business or trade divert them okay so yes if you go straight to work without praying you might think you're making an extra thousand bucks in the cash register but no you don't allow any of that to stop you from praying praying the time of prayer is a time of prayer and i'm still teaching my kids this when we were growing up if the if it's adhan if it's maghrib you just drop everything. You can't be like watching TV and this and no. Like for example, with Maghrib, it's not like a long span of time, right? It's a challenge sometimes to eat your iftar dinner and like all this and try to get in Maghrib. But, um, and I gotta hop to the Kahoot game and I don't know if I'm gonna get, I mean, the next surah, maybe I'll spend two minutes on it. But, you know, um, 
that is the first priority, right? Especially with Maghrib, it's such a small time period, then there's Fajr also has a pretty short time. But we don't allow the hecticness of the dunya life, which is always going to be hectic, we don't allow that to come between us and our first priority. It doesn't mean we give up dunya. It doesn't mean you have to pray all day and night. No, you don't have to pray all day and night. Just the priority, the fard, we have to do it. Let's just um, go ahead and hop into the next surah for a minute because I don't want you to uh, miss any questions either. But the next surah is called Furqan. Once again, a Makkan surah. Furqan means standard or criterion. Furqan means standard or criterion. When, when you can distinguish, when Allah is guiding you to distinguish the criterion, that's the meaning of Furqan, okay? And um, just a very quick look is, uh, you know, the people who are critical, they'll always say, oh, this is from the olden days, you know, like this is not relevant, this Quran, this message. And also that other messengers were also opposed. We already talked about this when we said that messengers, they always came with the same message. You look at all the messengers named in the Quran, they had the same message, right? And they were also, all of them were opposed, all of them. They all had people against them. And um, also in verse 59, Allah mentions again that he created everything in the heavens and earth in six stages. Uh, we already went uh, through that before. And uh, yeah, basically, I think that's the main points I want to bring up from there. Let me quickly jump to the Kahoot game. Bismillah, because I don't want you to miss that. Okay, Bismillah, let me push classic. I'm going to share my screen. So, ah, hold on, new share, new share. Ah, here. Okay, can you see the Kahoot game? Yeah. Um, thank you. The reason I'm going to start, because I think I joined the call three minutes early, so we're going to get cut off really quick. Wait, Mama. Yeah, so we have 8003465. Um, Asma has it. 8003465. Okay. All right. 8003465. And we got three players. Let's get a few more. Mashallah, five. Let's get a few more. Any reason if this call drops, just we'll log back in for a few minutes and play the game because it's just like usual, like it's seven or eight questions, not a lot. Bismillah, let's start. All right. I think that I went, oh, this one has 11 questions. I, I, I think I did the, all the questions. On the day of judgment, we, we will feel like we lived on the earth for how long? A day or part of a day, 5 million years, 14 centuries, or for eternity. Excellent. A day or part of a day. Woohoo. I said the first place. Y'all are awesome. Number two. Surah Mu'minun starts with what? A description of the hypocrites, the believers, the kuffar, or the polytheists. Surah Mu'minun starts with what? We talked about this. Excellent. Uh, the believers. Starts with the believers. And still got some awesome winners. Number three. True or false? Allah does not place a burden on any soul beyond what it can bear. We talked about this. Allah does not place a burden. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Y'all are super smart. Y'all are winners. MashaAllah. Yeah, number, four. number four, Surah Noor has many guidelines regarding what is it? Cheesecake, ice cream, and cake. Ghost stories, gin stories, and tales of the old. Modesty, clothing, and gender relations are none of the above. Surah Noor. Very, very good. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Number six. Y'all are actually six people got it. Y'all are awesome. Number five, Surah Noor says, if you have wealth, you should really what? Walk proudly, dress fashionably, evade taxes, or help your poor relatives. What does Surah Noor say? If you have wealth, you should really do what? Help your poor relatives. I know you are going to do that. Y'all are awesome. True or false? You must ask permission to enter a home. Is that true or false? You must ask permission to enter a home. That, you guys all got that. Y'all are killing this, mashallah. True or false, only men need to lower their gaze. Is that true or false? Only men need to lower their gaze. How about women? That is so false, y'all are so right. Okay, next, before we get cut off. Oh, number eight, Allah is the blank of the heavens and the earth. There was a verse that we just read in Surah Nur. Wisdom, fragrance, mystery, or light. Allah is the what? 
He is the light of the heavens and the earth. Excellent. Very, very good. Almost there. Number nine, those homes are honored who do what? Those homes are honored. We just talked about this. Keep nice yards, praise Allah, get the most Amazon packages or paint the walls often. Yes, those who praise Allah, not those who get the most Amazon packages. Next. Although I know everybody gets a lot of Amazon packages. Al-Furqan is what? We just talked about this. Al-Furqan is the bridge over hell, forbidden trees, food from the sky or criterion. Criterion or judgment. So Al-Furqan is what? It is the criterion. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think we might have one more. Number 11, true or false? All messengers of Allah through time brought completely different beliefs. Is that true or false? False. They brought the same beliefs. They didn't bring different beliefs. Okay, y'all are so cool. One of these days, I'm going to get you an attendance sheet like by tomorrow. Maliha, congratulations. You got 11 out of 11. Asma got 11 out of 11. And... Maryam, I'll bet there's more. You guys, Maryam, I should say it. Many of you, many of you got... Oh, sorry. Whoops. Sorry, let me turn the volume down. I have a kid taking a test. Okay, I'm going to do a quick surah. Okay, I'm sorry, I have a kid taking a test. Let me do a really quick dua, inshallah, before we go. Miss Esma? Yes, I mean, Miss Muna? Sorry. Um, what's it called? How do we do the attendance? Yes, I'm going to send, let me send it right now in a link, okay? I'm going to send you the attendance in the WhatsApp group for your parents. Okay. And I'm going to send you a social distancing high five for all the winners. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick dua right now. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk wal asr. Inna al-insana la fi khusr illa ladina amin wa ahim salihah. Wa ta'asab al-haqi wa ta'asab sabr. You'll get your attendance in about five minutes. Uh, I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it into the WhatsApp group. Thank you, guys. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Same time, same place. Assalamu alaikum.